Hi, my name is Mary Jane Logan McCallum, and I'm a history professor at the University of Winnipeg. For the next few minutes, I want to talk about the history of tuberculosis, or TB, in Manitoba. Tuberculosis is an infectious disease contracted by inhalation, which has both active and inactive phases. When it is active, it is contagious to others. And for those who have it, the bacteria attacks different parts of the body, commonly the lungs. It is now a disease that is treated with antibiotics. However, before the 1940s, the treatment of the disease was isolation, rest, and often surgery. Left untreated, the disease progresses and you can die from it. From the 1870s, many more Indigenous people than non-Indigenous people proceeded from being infected to having active, serious, and deadly cases of the disease. This led many people to believe that people of First Nations ancestry lacked resistance to the disease or that they were racially susceptible to it. However, outbreaks of tuberculosis occur under certain conditions, specifically poverty, overcrowding, and malnutrition. For Indigenous people, colonialism is the context for the high rates of TB. Until 1940, the federal government committed very few resources to helping Indigenous people with tuberculosis. But in the 1930s, medical professionals increasingly warned of what they thought was a menace of Indian TB to public health in the province. The Manitoba Sanatorium Board was anxious to trace the disease among the entire population, and so began a significant public health campaign to eradicate TB. They took a three-pronged approach. First, they aimed to survey the population to identify people with TB. Second, they built hospitals and put resources behind TB research and treatment. And third, they developed programs of rehabilitation to assist those who had recovered from TB to resist relapses of the disease. Case finding was a term that was used by health professionals and government workers to describe efforts to locate individuals who had tuberculosis, usually by traveling clinics and surveys. The theory was that uh, by discovering the disease at early stages and removing and isolating those who had it, this would possibly prevent the spread of disease to others. Surveys did two things. They did skin tests and x-rays. Um, sometimes those surveys also did other tests as well. By the 1940s, these surveys began to travel with treaty parties where First Nations were coerced to submit to an x-ray or be refused their annuity. Sanatoria are special hospitals constructed for the treatment of tuberculosis patients. According to Western medical wisdom, because the disease was so contagious, patients should be isolated and contained within special hospitals where they could receive treatment, which was up until the forties, fresh air, healthy food, outdoor exercise, and a life in a kind of rural setting. Uh, this was the setting for Ninet, which is Manitoba's showcase sanatorium and which opened in 1910. However, some sanatoria were also created nearer to city centers, ideally so that it would be more convenient for patients and their families. Other hospitals were created to treat Indigenous patients only. The Manitoba Sanatorium Board came to operate three Indian hospitals in Manitoba on behalf of the federal government. And these hospitals became the nucleus of the specialized segregated TB treatment work for First Nations. Denver Indian Hospital in Selkirk opened its doors in 1940. Denver was a 50 bed hospital, which took in First Nations patients from Ontario, Saskatchewan, as well as Manitoba. It had limited treatment and diagnostic facilities and patients in need of surgery or complicated treatment had to be transferred to other hospitals. The 160 bed Clearwater Lake Indian Hospital opened in 1945. Located 26 miles outside the PAW, it had been a United States Army base built in 1943. Brandon Sanatorium opened in 1947. It had been a military and veterans hospital. A 250 bed hospital, Brandon operated a full and complete sanatorium service and had a resident surgeon. When they had to remain in bed, patients spent their time reading, playing cards, 
listening to radio, and perhaps playing music. Additionally, all of the sanatoriums provided education, um, also educational therapy and uh, or occupational therapy and uh, rehabilitation services. Education programs ran for only a um, very limited number of hours during the day, um, either in bed or in the classroom, and this is because they wanted patients to rest. In sanatorium schools, the emphasis was on the three R's, but also on handwork, where patients participated um, in education from their beds. Handwork uh, included embroidery, beadwork, knitting, leather, and woodwork, also soapstone carving, and many other art forms. Rehabilitation also included vocational training and placement in Southern Manitoba towns and cities. Rehabilitation was influenced by prevailing efforts to integrate and assimilate Indigenous people. The history of tuberculosis in Manitoba has largely been told as a story of medical success and uh, focused on leading medical figures and the triumphant campaign to control TB. This story, however, fails to take into assessment Indigenous experiences of the disease. We know, for instance, that for Indigenous people, compulsory hospital confinement was longer than for non-Indigenous people. We also know that Indian hospital care was funded less than provincial hospital care. At these institutions, Indigenous patients were removed from their families and their communities for treatment in basically white communities where language, culture, food, and social expectations were different. Widespread racism and indifference towards the suffering of Indigenous people was systemic in Manitoba and impacted every aspect of TB treatment patients endured. While the history of TB in Manitoba is not ancient, it has been all but erased from everyday discourse in Manitoba. By centering the Indigenous experience or the experience of Indigenous citizens in Manitoba, we can narrate a truer story about our province's history of the tuberculosis epidemic. Thank you.